What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Team Chat Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Jared Wilson, joined across the power of the internet, sadly, not in person again. We got spoiled. We got we were talking about this before we start. We got spoiled doing extra life, but now here yeah. we are back across the power of the internet. But still glad to be here with you recording Rachel Mogan. Bonjour, no. Bonjour. It's to you just as well. not the same. It's not the same. You know, we adapted to this. We adapted to this remote recording life, and it, it's been great. But then you know, you just get back together, have that yeah. magic of the two of us in the room together, and letting that energy flow. And you know, then it just moves back into this, and it's just. I miss Still the fun. table. Yeah, I know. I want to be able to sit at the table, want to yeah. be able to show off all the stuff behind it, have our old studio back, but no. Yeah, Still and fun. eventually we're going to have to be able to show off that sweet, sweet extra life light box. I know, because that was one yeah. of the things that we grazed I'm over uh, 250 that. bucks uh, that we would get this light box. So that's that'll well, be we fun. We're going to get have. like five light boxes. I feel like we <laughs> deserve it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, technically, I think if you sign up as like the platinum participant, which is what we do as Team Chat, that's what enters you to be able to get all the goodies. So, like, yeah, we're getting a shirt. We're oh. getting some like decals. We're getting Ooh. the light box. So, yeah, we're getting a lot of fun, cool stuff. So, it'll, it'll be getting good. Getting all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Which, Hell speaking yeah. of that, Thanks, everybody, for again, for helping us make Extra Life 2020 just purely spectacular. We uh, set a $500 goal. We wound up tripling that, over tripling that the day of Extra Life. And now I know that since we've had Camp the Boy uh, streaming a few other times, like, and I think a couple other people have gotten some donations, we're pushing 2000 So we're doing really, yeah, really good. So close. thank you, everybody. That was really awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you specifically to uh, tri- not Triple triple Extra Life Podcast, Triple XP <laughs> Podcast, uh, Shane and uh, uh, I, I, I always want to call him what I call him jokingly, but his official name is Just Mike Plays. So thank you to yeah. Shane and Just Mike Plays. Thank you to Roro. Thank you to Kirok Craft. Thank you to Fuchsia for popping in. Thank you to Bro Mogan and of course Sam, mm-hmm. uh, everybody who came out and helped us. It was the best one yet. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. So we're going to have to like shoot for the stars for real next year. So. Yeah, but it's still, it was a great 10k. Day. We can do it. I feel I believe it. We can do it because the next year we're going to just amass such a huge following over here for here at Team Chat Podcast, a weekly video game show with that. People are just going to be like, man, I can't help but give them all their money. But yeah, that's yeah. right. You're here at Team Chat Podcast, a weekly video game show where we talk about games, the ones we love, the ones we hate and everything in between. New episodes come out Tuesdays, 9 a.m. Central Time. You can listen to those on podcast services around the World Wide Web as well as watch a video version of each episode over on our YouTube channel. Links for all that are in the description below. You can find us on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Join our Discord server and Wow, I blanked completely on that. What do I say after a Discord server? <laughs> Patreon, that's right. If you want to help make the show bigger and better, so you can head over to patreon.com slash teamchatpodcast where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the show. And in return, we'll give you cool perks like getting the episodes early before the general Tuesday release, access to a private disc- uh, patron-only channel on our Discord server, as well as some other perks and goodies along the way. Uh, so, But if you can't do that, that's no big deal at all. We totally understand. But you can also help make the show bigger and better in, in free ways, such as telling your friends, writing us reviews, and of course, subscribing on all the different places that you enjoy our content. So we really appreciate it. And a big thank you and love to all of our patrons and listeners alike. Heart Heart emojis. I will say the heart emoji is the one thing that works a little bit better in the webcam context. That's true. You get, you get a little bit better idea of what we're doing. You get directly on target. Yeah. You can judge the, uh, The quality of the The heart. quality. (laughs) Yes, that's the word I was looking for. The quality of the heart emoji that we bring to you each week. But before we get into our main topic of the day, let's get a little bit of news and what's coming out soon in our moment with Mogan. Okay, so we are going to unfortunately have to do a little bit of backtracking because... Yeah, because we didn't do one of these for Extra Life. And in case you missed it, a whole bunch of stuff has recently happened with video games. (laughs) So just in case you weren't aware, by now, both the Xbox Series X, the Series S... And the PlayStation 5 um, hard, I don't know what you call, want to call it, the PlayStation 5 regular edition and the PlayStation 5 all digital edition. All of those next gen consoles are now available. Mm-hmm. So I guess we're going <laughs> to, oh damn it, I'm going to have to start working both PS4 and PS5 and Xbox One and Xbox One. Oh whatever. yeah. Cause oh my God, this is going to take At least forever. for a while they should still be, they should at least still be somewhat... Uh, for the little while, like they'll be for both, yeah. I would imagine, okay. both gens. But, so 
All of the following came out as of November 12th. Uh, so No Man's Sky has made it to the PS5. Observer, System Redux, also PS5. Overcooked All You Can Eat, PS5. Planet Coaster Console Edition, PS5. Uh, the PlayStation 5 itself. Sackboy, A Big Adventure is out now for PS5 and PS4. The Pathless. This is actually one of the few that I was Ooh, like, yeah. yes, I still really want to play that one. I want this too. So The Pathless is now out for PS5, PS4, PC, and iOS. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Warhammer Chaos Bane is out for the PS5. Watch Dogs Legion, PS5. WRC9. I assume that is about RC Cola, but we'll, <laughs> we'll have to do some research on that one later. Uh, another one that I feel like almost flew under the radar just in the chaos of the PS5 launch. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is now out for the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X and S, the PS4, the Xbox One, and PC. Oh, and I'm sorry, that came out as of November 13th, so now we're getting into the 13th. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, a rare Kingdom Hearts entry here for PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Mortal Kombat 11 is now out for the PS5, PS4, all of the Xboxes, Switch, Stadia, and PC. Uh, and then coming very soon on November 19th, uh, the God, the game just at literally everyone has been waiting for. November 19th, mark your calendars, people. Monster Truck Championship. Oh, out man. Out for the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> uh, along with Star Renegades for Xbox One and Switch. Hyrule Warriors. This one I'm actually a little bit interested in. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity comes out for the Nintendo Switch on November 20th. Katamari Damachi Reroll for PS4 and Xbox One hits on November 20th as well. And then just a little bit further down the line on the 23rd, we have World of War World of Warcraft Shadowlands for PC. And that gets us, I think, at least through next week so I can stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, pretty exhaustive list of stuff coming out there because, yes, like she said, the new console generation is here. Now, over the last few episodes or, you know, around our extra lifetime and all that, we've been going through and ranking some of our favorite things about the previous generation games because now they really are previous gen we're in a new generation sadly neither of us have the new consoles yet, <laughs> yeah but we're, we're still, still in the we're still uh, <laughs> but hey you know we we took a chance and while everyone else was rushing out the door to get the new ps5 and the xbox series s and x we rushed out to the stores because we raised over 250 dollars on our extra live stream and bought skyrim <laughs> <laughs> so Shmogan and I are playing Skyrim for the very first time because we like kind of like it's kind of a, a, a like a knee jerk uh, goal or like reward for hitting that we, goal. We, that we, we frankly just didn't know what to expect this year after mm -hmm. last year because it was such a train wreck. So we were like, oh, well, man, and with we, all the pandemic stuff yeah, going on this with year, all the pandemic stuff. So we were like, we shouldn't get our hopes too high. And then they like went, we, we should have, we should have, we, we, we should have shot for the stars. Hopes high. So we had to make up a couple of rewards kind of on the fly. And we were like, what would people like Skyrim? I've heard a lot about that game <laughs> Heard good things. So yeah, we're actually both playing through Skyrim for the very first time. And I, how, how long do you think you've played at this point? I've only played like maybe two, three so, hours. I haven't I, got it into it. This super is much. something that's kind of like a, off the cuff announcement, I think the only way I'm going to make notable progress in Skyrim is if I have like an accountability system in place. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to commit to streaming all of oh, my Skyrim nice. play on Mondays and Wednesdays, starting at about 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Cool. So the exception will be Thanksgiving week. I probably won't be doing any streaming except for like our normal stuff then. Uh, so don't expect too much like right around Thanksgiving. But for the rest of it, I'm going to be trying to stream again Mondays and Wednesdays starting at 830 p.m. Central time. And that's the like that's dedicated Skyrim time. So I'm yeah. trying to not play it outside of that. I since so we won't both be doing like the same co content streaming. I, I don't think I'm going to necessarily stream it every, like the whole playthrough. I might like jump on every once in a while. I'll be like, I'm derping around Skyrim today. Uh, but I'm actually still trying to get through Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So I'll be you yeah. know, posting everybody on that when as as we stream to those two. But maybe we should while we're playing it to just kind of help us both stay in it. We should like at the beginning of these episodes, like kind of just have like a quick like five minutes about what we just did or where we're at or something like that. Because I mean, I know a lot of our listeners were very interested in hearing our first thoughts and opinions and all that stuff so maybe we can kind of like help that will also help us stay uh stay on so we don't like five years later like well we're still working our way through i think i'm about 12 hours in <laughs> really but you think you're already 12 no hours in? no no, no. Oh. i was saying so that way in five years okay. we're not like i'm only 12 hours in but i think gotcha. i'm getting in the hang of it 
<laughs> I see. Oh man, like when I did my first little stream when I picked it up on Skyrim Day because it was its birthday, I was like, I don't. That worked out I don't well. know. I don't know how to play this game. <laughs> it's actually like kind of hard to get the hang of at first. So I was like, I died a lot. Yeah. Uh, one of which was just like testing fall damage. You always have to I, take I that saw one that. Big you just like jumped off the mountain. Damage. It's like, let's find out. Because <laughs> there isn't always, there isn't always yeah. fall damage. <laughs> That's true. Apex That's Legends, not. you can fall from the literal sky and just be fine. So my, like in, in today's gamer knowledge, I learned that you can die through fall damage in Skyrim, and it only took <laughs> nine years for me to figure that out. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah. Speaking of birthdays, d- uh, the today that we're recording, the what is today, 15th, is actually the 19th birthday of the first Halo. Whoa! That's a crazy to right? think about. That's crazy. Oh, I don't Nin- know it's how almost to feel 20 about years that. old. Halo oh is almost God. 20 years old. That's r- ridiculous. Man, maybe we should do like streams and playthroughs of that for next that year. That makes me feel birthday. a little queasy. I know, <laughs> like, right? Oh, I saw God. that and I was like, clutch my pearls. Uh, that 19. can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> my God. You could oh, have a high school Jesus. child. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm graduating. It'd be graduating hey, high school. <laughs> Halo's in college. That's yeah. crazy. It oh, is my nuts. Goodness. But so we're continuing for this today's topic. We are wrapping up kind of our summation of the last generation by going through and each of us listing our favorite games of the last generation, our our top three. Um, So I kind of anticipated that some of the ones, mine specifically, are ones that I've talked about a lot and I feel like talked about a lot recently. So I don't want to necessarily belabor those those points i won't like rehash the same thoughts that i keep saying uh, over and over again so we'll, we'll kind of roll through those pretty quick but uh or at least mine I, we were talking before and i know mogan's are some more obscure ones that she hasn't they, talked about they're as much. not obscure we just haven't talked about them well that's what i mean just we, we just haven't brought them up recently it's not so, firewatch i'm not talking about firewatch again. <laughs> <laughs> so i think a good place though to start off because it was in your list on the last one which is the best action adventure games of the PS4, Xbox one, uh, that we had some crossover. So I want to go ahead and get this one out of the way. First, my number three, uh, favorite game of the last generation is I'd have to say life is strange, a fantastic choice. And yes. I, honestly, I didn't actually think of it because, uh, I, I guess I should preface this by saying when I thought about this episode topic, my thinking was, what do I think are the three best games in the generation? Not what were my three favorites. If it were left up to me, I would have picked a bunch of different stuff. But because I was thinking, well, what do I think best exemplifies specifically for me, like the Mm -hmm. height of PS4 gaming, at least like in my opinion, I picked my three based off of that. And of course, it's games that I've actually played. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, we're not picking games that we haven't played. And I know there are some that we missed. Like the one that I'm still kind of kicking myself that I haven't played yet is Ghost of Sushi. Sushima, oh, just because yeah. I like it's so well loved, and I I want I just can't fit it in. <laughs> it's a like, massive game. It's, it's a, a big game, game, and it's one that I know I want to spend a lot of time in, and yeah. I just haven't haven't got around to it this year. But and I know for, that it's highly highly regarded. So again, yeah. if we miss one that you're like, what the hell? Why didn't you talk about this? I'm. It's purely for that reason. We. Yeah. Either A, didn't like it, or B, we didn't play it. So, And for additional clarity, we're intentionally not talking about the Nintendo Switch because mm-hmm. its its lifespan didn't really align with the other, right. with, with the PS4 and with the Xbox One. So Switch is its own special little snowflake. And it's not ending ways. yet. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. so we're, we're just kind of excluding those, except for games, obviously, that were multi-platform and came out for the Switch, but exactly. not like Switch exclusives are exempt from this listing. Yeah. But yeah, so Life is Strange, first one. I mean, like this is one... It just felt like it had to be on here because it's one of the games that like you and I both, we've talked in depth about how much we love Life is Strange and how like it, I mean, it really kicked off our love. I mean, that's we've done tons of episodes now across the show, both on the first Life is Strange game, all five episodes of the second Life is Strange game. Yeah. Captain Spirit. You know, when that it's spent standalone demo that Gosh, came out. When you actually think about it that way in sheer quantity, we have talked about Life, a is, lot Strange of Life is Strange the most. Yeah. That's weird to think about. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, I know. So I feel like, you know, for all the same reasons that we've talked about before, which I'll just briefly sum up, it's just like the story of it was so emotional, way more than I was expecting it to be. It really cracked. And honestly, the type of game that Life is Strange is more of like, 
it's not a point and click adventure, but it is very similar to that in that you basically, you walk around in secluded areas, you pick up clues, you talk to people that forms your opinions. You have the ability to do the Max's rewind ability and stuff like that, but you're still trying to figure out this overall mystery. And I just feel like for that type of game specifically, isn't necessarily one that I don't, that I think I would have gravitated to. Um, I believe it was my friend Jordan who actually like, she was the one who was like, have you played life is strange ever? It's really good. You should check it out. And so thank you, Jordan, because it is a good ass game and one that I just really just found a special place in my heart for because the characters of Chloe and Max are outstanding. Their relationship and how they, you know, how the game handles their growth together, coming back together after several years. Uh, you know, I just feel like it does really well. It tackles a lot of really heavy issues and handles it really well, but also it allows you to really experience it and play it out. Even though Max and Chloe or Max specifically, since you play as her is her own person, there still is a lot of freedom and choice and how you can direct the narrative of the game. And I just think for blending in this, like some supernatural, but also a whole lot of human elements into this game, it did it really well. It did it and it resonated very emotionally with me. I still remember at the very last of end of chapter five of life is strange, having to make that final climatic decision. It's rough. Which I guess, you know, is very rough. It's you know a rough what? We call. Can, it's a rough call. And I don't know if you saw our Twitter interaction yet I or did. before. I'm with Roro. I, I I'm, 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 yeah. I'm calling him out a little bit here. I'm not really calling you out, but still, it's like you're the only person I know of who's gone opposite of what I chose, and I was shocked. Oh, he's <laughs> so for me, he's not because both him and Bro Mogan chose the option that we didn't choose. So it's like, really? oh, wow, there Bro Mogan, what what are you doing? Out. Yeah, well, his explanation was that he chose the more the, he he was like love wins, and I was like, yeah, all right, go <laughs> sure, <for it." laughs> but uh. Yeah, people didn't in that decision, but I guess in either decision has its has its definite yeah, they both uh, cons. Have their pros and cons. <laughs> yeah, but still, like that, I remember literally sitting there. I think for ten minutes trying to decide how I wanted this game to end, and I picked, made my choice, and it still just was a gut punch either way. Yeah. So I think that's a very like that's a games that can do that well and pull that off immediately like sit very high in my lists. And so I just think for the whole package of what Life is Strange brings and for its some it's unexpected, the unexpected uh, love that I found for it definitely sets it up. And it was a, an earlier game in the generation, but still yeah, it was. like it's it's set. It's still like su- cemented itself very highly for me in the like the top game for the generation. Yeah. So. I completely agree. Life is Strange has some of the best narrative storytelling, some of the most interesting like mechanical qu- mechanical qualities with the ability to turn back time mm-hmm. and how that later affects the world at large. You kind of touched on the supernatural elements. I feel like we kind of always forget to talk about those when we're talking about Life is Strange. Yeah. But well, because episodes, we get so wrapped up in the, in the yeah, people. Yeah, we get so wrapped up in the people, but it is worth noting that in episodes three, four, and five, like kind of closing out the not closing out, but for a good majority of the game, there's a wildly complex system of, you know, what does it mean to time travel and Mm -hmm. how does that affect the world? And it gets really into like some interesting in-depth thought about what would, what would actually happen? Like in real life, if one person could turn back time, how would that affect all of the world? And I just thought that that was fascinating and that they approached it in a really interesting way. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, I mean, again, we've talked a lot about this game. I'm, you know, people have heard our thoughts and sorry if you're new, but we have a lot of old content that you can go back and listen to our full thoughts of Life is Strange. We actually even on YouTube have a playlist that's dedicated to only our Life is Strange content. So you can go check that out there. But Mogan, what is your number three game for best of the generation? Okay, so I'm going to start with the one that I kind of have the weakest argument for simply okay. because I haven't gotten to play it nearly as much as the two, the second and first games. But I feel like it is a stellar example. And in my opinion, like best in its class, it's going to be Bloodborne. I oh. think Bloodborne definitely okay. deserves to be considered among the best of the generation. So obviously the Soulsborne games, and that's air quotes, you know, anything related to Dark Souls, Demon Souls. Some people say stuff like Hollow Knight. It's all very Soulsy. I kind of mm-hmm. disagree with so I think it's too liberally used, but whatever. The point is Bloodborne is one of the more recent entries in what most people would consider to be like more hard Dark Souls games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it came out in what 2016 
God, I should have had this written down before we I started. Mean, it was I'll very it up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, what like 2015, 2016, yeah. yeah. It came out pretty early on in the, not early on, like middle, middle of the PS4's lifespan. And I played it a little bit. I think I've put, I would say, max 25 to 30 hours into that game because I'm literal garbage at it. I am. I've never touched it because I know here. I would be garbage at it. Yeah, I actually think that I've probably put more time into Dark Souls 3 than Bloodborne, which is ironic because I like Bloodborne more. And that's for a couple <laughs> of different reasons. So I think Bloodborne is in my in my eyes kind of the best of the Soulsborns for a number of reasons that are kind of all more or less aesthetics. <laughs> Let's face facts. Dark Souls is an ugly game. <laughs> If you disagree with that, I'm sorry. I think it's really ugly and it's not fun to look at. Some of the monsters are really cool, and I think that the character design of Dark Souls is awesome. But if you're just like looking at it, like on a like you're just sitting there sipping your tea while you take mm -hmm. a little break and cool down your sweaty gamer hands and you're just looking at Dark Souls. Sweaty. It's not like Breath of the Wild where you're standing over a cliffside vista looking over a beautiful sunset and you're like, ah. Oh, this is this is nice <laughs> when you're in dark souls you're like <laughs> oh nice nice misty morning at the graveyard today a lot right. of right skeletons coming at me yeah a lot of a lot of gray there's a lot of gray um a lot of blood <laughs> there's there's a lot of there's a lot of brown and yep. um plenty of white from all the bones yeah just a lot of gray white and, and dirt <laughs> Yeah. So, I don't know. I've just never found Dark Souls to be an especially pretty game. But Bloodborne, uh, that game has some really good graphics for starters. Um, and if they do ever remaster it for the PS5, I'll give it another shot. I'll try again. And maybe this time it'll stick. But even without having any remastered graphics, Bloodborne is just a beautiful game to look at. Uh, the character designs especially, I think we're kind of ticked up a few notches mm -hmm. from the Dark Souls games. Uh, they're just really sleek. Everything looks really sleek, well-designed, very well put together. You can just tell that it's got a little bit more artistry to it. Not, not even artistry, finesse. It's yeah. got a little bit more finesse going on there. And then the environments themselves are really kind of what draw me to Bloodborne because in the world of Dark Souls, it's kind of a... Not not bland, but it's just very much set in that kind of pseudo medieval setting, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. knights are cool. Yay. It's Solaire. Praise the sun. Yay, Praise Solaire. Sun. He's my favorite part. But everything else is just kind of not really my jam. It's not what I personally gravitate towards. But Bloodborne is because it's based very shamelessly and, and not even shamelessly, like in homage to the works of H.P. Lovecraft. It is a mm -hmm. game that is very much inspired uh, in what we would consider like modern times to be Lovecraftian mythos type of things with its own flair, of course, Bloodborne has its own set of gods, its own set of creatures, its own background, but it's clearly Lovecraftian and you can see that in the way that the world is designed. And speaking of like the architecture in particular, I get really jazzed about Bloodborne's architecture because it's all very like Baroque, Gothic, like old Europe, but not that old, not medieval mm -hmm. old. We're talking like a few years past the Renaissance, like they made it pretty far. And then some shit happened and things yeah. kind of took a downhill turn and now there's monsters everywhere, uh, which <laughs> kind of leads me into the next point that why I think Bloodborne is so fantastic is the story itself. I know that Dark Souls has a story and it's pretty good. It, it's, it's good. It's okay. I find it interesting. Thumbs mm -hmm. up. But the story of Bloodborne, it's like, oh, I really want to know more about this. So the, the basic setup is you are a hunter and you've come to the hunter's dream, which is kind of like, you know, a pseudo dream world. Uh, and if I'm getting any of this wrong, don't hate me too much. I didn't play it that much and I was dying most of the time, but I still really like it. Uh, so you're in the hunter's dream, which is just this brutal world of monsters on monsters on monsters. And you know that you're kind of trying to figure out some stuff stuff in terms of there's this sickness that everybody has that is dare i say born in the blood ah. it's some sort of blood-based sickness and you, you, <laughs> you really can't say it any other way without it sounding stupid so there's an illness that goes around through consuming this stuff that is 
blood. It's like old, it's the old blood of what you kind of grasp are gods, question mark, some sort of otherworldly entity. And people have voluntarily consumed this blood in the thought that it will bring them to a higher plane. It will bring them closer to these, you know, sort of gods that they're looking for. So everything about the world of Bloodborne is people were kind of on a quest to get to that next level of humanity, mm -hmm. maybe even transcend humanity, and they shouldn't have. They yeah, that's never a good plan. It never works out for people have done, to try to do that. that. Yeah, no. you, sh you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have invited in these cosmic horrors just because you wanted to be smart and have eyes on the inside of your skull. It's like you don't, sometimes you don't need that kind of knowledge. Sometimes you can live without it. In mm -hmm. fact, probably even live better and longer without it. Uh, yeah. So just the, the many layers of Bloodborne story that are all just equally horrible not horrible horrific they're yeah. horrific in the best way that i love is what makes me think that bloodborne is you know just a stellar game in general and i think best in its class in terms of mechanics because maybe this is just me maybe it's just the classes that i was picking in dark souls that weren't getting me the same result bloodborne feels like a much faster paced game uh the combat mechanics and just your movement in general felt much more fluid you know you felt faster lighter uh, and i think a big part of that has to do with the fact that you don't really shield like mm. d defense isn't really a hard thing that you do in bloodborne unless you really tried i'm not actually sure i I saw a shield ever. You get like a shotgun, you get a bunch of different types of slashy swords and all kinds of different weird weapons. So the idea is to have this very fast paced, fluid combat that you just kind of kick ass in, but also get your ass kicked on the regular because of mm -hmm. course it's a Soulsborne game. The difficulty is there. <laughs> it's, it's quite right. difficult, but it definitely feels at least in my hands, more attainable just because i am a little bit more you know i'm a spoiled modern gamer i'm a little <laughs> bit more accustomed now to being able to have things go quickly yeah. so i it just it, it the faster pace of it the um the fluid motions it just all felt you know it just feels like dark souls again just ratcheted up a few notches to just make everything better it's dark souls but better and yeah. if you don't agree too bad no, not if you don't agree too bad if you don't agree Good for you. Agree to disagree. I think Bloodborne is the better game. So I need to go back to it. I still really want to continue to make some progress in Bloodborne because there are many different outcomes depending on what kinds of things you do in the game. There are different endings. So it, you can do all kinds of things and get a lot out of it on replay. So I mm -hmm. just need to I just need to get back in there and give it another shot. But yeah, Bloodborne. I think it's awesome. Nice. Yeah, that's one that I just really haven't ever. I Like every once in a while I get like, should I try it? But then sure. I know my my Dark Souls run didn't go very well either, so I don't know if I necessarily want to bring that much frustration into my life. <laughs> yeah, I agree. See, that's but I agree. Like, it does look like, aesthetically very cool. Yeah, I feel like Bloodborne is that kind of game where you play really hard for a few hours, and then you're like, ah, oh, I need a break. <laughs> I need a break like deep in my spirit from this. And you I'm go like, back to it and you're just like, do I want to do that again? Do I want to do this again? <laughs> do I? <laughs> so yeah, it's a punishing experience, but that's, that's why people like it. That's a big part yeah. of the draw for, for many people that are a big fan of the series. For sure. For sure. Well, my second game and my thought process for kind of checking these, for picking out these games, I kind of wanted variety. Like I didn't necessarily want to choose like all big, like over the top action. I didn't want to choose all, open world Assassin's Creed esque Horizon Zero Dawn games, which, you know, so that's kind of why I mentioned them in some of the other past entries in this best of the generation series that we've been doing. But I had to turn in making this and I was like, okay, so I've got Life is Strange. That kind of checks my box for like the, you know, the the more narrative like adventure in a sense, or lighter narrative adventure, I guess. And but then I was like, all right, so what's another one? Ah, a good old platformer. Gotta go with a good old platformer. And this one is Ori and the Blind Forest. It's a very solid. I actually always forget that that game was for Xbox and that I yeah. had to wait a hell of a long time for it to come to the Switch. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Man, I could have I picked that one too. I didn't even think about it because I played it on the Switch. So in my mind, it doesn't, oh, it was crossed it doesn't out. play yeah. to Xbox. But that's what it is. 
damn. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a good one. It, uh, Ori in the Blind Forest, if you haven't played it, you you play this, this forest creature, Ori, and you're trying to basically restore... Uh, restore like the light of this world of this world back in by restoring the power of this old ancient tree and to revitalize and bring this the force that the land in which you live Nibel, kind of like bringing it back to life because it's it's like basically plagued by this sickness really and again this thing uh, this game above all else and i think another reason why it makes it on this list is it had it's such an emotional game which i feel like for platformers unless ones like escaping memory that I can't think of aren't necessarily geared that way in their storytelling. It's usually a very specific, you know, you have this, you're trying to get from a to B through this series of levels, which is what you're yeah. doing here. Great but example, it, Mega man, not very it, invested in its emotional storytelling. <laughs> exactly. And even, you could even say the same for like Mario, you know, even like Mario. Yeah, Odyssey. That's very true. Like it's, it's, you have fun, but it's like a lighthearted, oh, you're trying to like get this, you know, you're saving Peach, you're defeating Bowser, or even like some of the more heavier ones. It is like there's this great evil that you're then going to eventually face down in this big in this big boss fight. But Ori in the Blind Forest, it, it, it just goes on a different level in that it, immediately literally. from the, literally, because it's like you're just, from the very beginning when you see Ori, you know, having to leave her home and then like, because she thinks that her adoptive mother figure is, is dead. And like from this sickness that Gross. just within the Spoilers. first, like Jesus. it's in the first five minutes. <laughs> okay. The game's several years old. I have to be able to it talk about it in some now. light. Okay. <laughs> I saved you guys on the spoilers for life is strange. Don't come at That's me too true. hard here, <laughs> but the, but so it's like, you have to go through this and like, it, it, so it immediately hits you with that emotional gut, gut punch, which kind of like grounds it and like builds even more of like the seriousness of why this is, you must go on this quest. And throughout the game, you know, you uh, you find out that Ori is actually kind of like a a more magical being who is like kind of a protector of these lands, but she's you know off on her own kind of. Yeah, thing. Ori's like actually a spirit creature. Mm -hmm. It's not like a normal. Yeah, it's not like you're it's a, not a mammal. You're like yeah, you're yeah, a little, yeah. You're a little spirit creature. Exactly, and so and then you do kind of have your like uh, Legend of Zelda esque. Hey, listen, was seen. Uh, this like light that kind of like but follows you throughout the annoying. much less annoying, way fewer. Hey, listens. And yeah. so, but the nice thing I think about what I liked about Ori and the Black Forest, the platforming is very difficult at times. Like there were a lot of like, you had to get the timing just right. Those you goddamn unlocked, frogs. Yeah. The ones that like would spit at you. My God, I would just get stuck in those areas for so long. So not only were you battling against these really intense enemies that could be difficult to fight, there were also great environmental challenges. Obviously the, the typical like avoiding spikes. Oh, don't fall into water. Don't, you know, all these different various pitfalls that you could fall across. But the key is about it is just and what I love so much other than the emotional story is how smooth it felt when you got into the groove of using Ori's abilities and just dashing, flipping, double jumping through the air. It was just beautiful to watch the animations, like the world itself, because it's such deep, rich colors that it has also, and just oh, yeah, also beautiful bright, game. beautifully done game. The soundtrack is amazing, which also adds to that emotional depth. And so, but the nice thing about it is I think I liked that it's not one, and this is slightly gameplay spoilery, you don't have the typical boss. Like you're not, yeah. you know, it's any time there is like a boss chat, what would be the boss challenge? It's usually in like a gauntlet obstacle run. So yeah. you're, it really is focusing on nailing down and you perfecting your timing, perfecting your moves, just to be able to get through this, these sections in the appropriate amount of time. And I just really liked that bosses are fun and I love fighting a good boss and having up to go up against that. But also at the end of the day, sometimes in a, in a platformer, you're like, okay, I need something new. I don't want to just sit here and fight against this bullet spongy boss who I have to jump on his head five times, whatever, do all that kind of stuff. I want something that does require like a lot of like nail biting uh, you know, like action in that you are just literally kind of running for your life in a lot of these situations, but just having to find the fastest path through, do the right moves. And that was just something different. And, you know, and I, and I know yeah. Ori's not the only game that does this, but I just think Ori did it so exceptionally well. I think so too. And I think that's a, I always kind of forget that Ori doesn't have bosses just because it's something that if you're not looking for it, you don't really miss its absence, right? Right. But I totally right. agree that the sense of accomplishment at the end of each level, being that more like super fast obstacle course that 
puts your platforming skills to the test as mm -hmm. opposed to your combat skills. I really liked that as well because the whole point of Ori is the platforming, not necessarily the combat. Like right. You need the combat. You need to be able to fight, and a lot of your abilities are linked to being able to do damage or survive damage. But I, I really liked that it didn't go the boss route too. That's a really good point. But yeah, so all of that, I just think it combined with its great story, combined with its incredibly like its soundtrack is one that I can just put on and it just puts oh, me yeah. into a, it, it just puts me into a good place. It's so calming. It's so relaxing. But then also when you know the musical cues that go along with some of the more emotional parts of the game, it just puts you right back in it. And you're like, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm happy. You know, so I think it, it does a lot of that really well, which again, for platformers, platformers normally do not connect with me in such a way. Like I'll play through it. And I'll be like, that was a fun game. I liked this combat. Like, you know, like, for example, something like Katana Zero or My Friend Pedro. Love those, bo both those games. Great platformers as well. But I kind of finished them and I was like, cool, that was fun. Cool. Cool, you bro. Know, good game. I, I had a good time. Combat was a lot of fun. I, it was really fun getting to explore the different ways and I could, how I could take out my enemies. This one, I was wholeheartedly in for like, I love the comp, the platforming of it as well, but I need to know where the story is going to go. I had heard the soundtrack before I started playing. I'm like, I need to see where this, where the soundtrack fits in. What's There's happening. A big it mean just, owl trying to eat me. What's exactly. that about? What's all that about? So I, it just, it just really hooked me in all ways, which I think platformers by and large, while I do enjoy them, don't quite get their hooks into me as much as Ori, as Ori in the blind forest did. Yeah, so for that reason, I, agree. I have to give Ori in the blind forest as my number two game of the best of the generation. A rock solid choice. All right, my next one, I may not have that much to actually say on it, but, but, <laughs> but in terms of like sheer hours and the, the, truly the level of enjoyment that I've had in it. And again, it's kind of like in my mind, it sort of not defines the PS4, but it's one of those definitive games for it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's gotta be Monster Hunter World. I wondered so, if this was going to be yeah. on your list. So it didn't make, I, I don't, it didn't make, you know, one of the games that I would recommend to somebody for good reason. <laughs> I would not recommend Monster Hunter World to someone who's never played a video game. What a bad starting point. It's for but, me, even me. I, I, I oh get God. confused in it too. When I, like our first stream where I yeah. like, was playing in it for a little bit, I was like, what, what am I doing? What's happening? Yeah, so I do want to preface this by saying Monster Hunter World is my personal first Monster Hunter game. Um, I've never played any of the other ones. I do gather from other people who have that world is pretty different from mm. the Monster Hunters that have come before. And if you're not aware, the, the Monster Hunter games are actually developed by two separate teams, kind of like how I think Call of Duties are the same way, mm -hmm. where like separate teams will develop certain games so that they come out on a more same schedule uh, yeah. the same goes for monster hunter um, one team will develop a particular monster hunter game and then the next team does the next one so i don't recall exactly which team did monster hunter world but they they knocked it out of the park what a great game mm -hmm. so if you're not familiar with monster hunter the premise is it is a really complex rpg with a very simple premise you're just going out there and killing big monsters. Yep. End of premise. So this is kind of where it's going to sound like I don't like the game, but I promise I do. <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, Monster Hunter has this person called the Handler. Um, the Handler is an NPC, and she is more or less your Navi. She's your character that like tells Navi, you what's that's, up. I could not think of the name. Yeah, I don't earlier. know what you said. So she's your I, said, Navi. I just said, hey, listen. Yeah, just the hey, listen. Oh, God, that describes her so well. Yeah, so she was very handler, annoying in the small bit that I oh, played. Oh, God, the handler. Uh, the handler is absolutely a hey, listen character. And no offense, if you like the handler, cool <laughs> like i'm trying not to vomit as i even think about that term but the handler fucking sucks and i hate her guts and it's not just her fault it's that i don't care even a little about the story of monster hunter that's mm -hmm. not why i'm here I don't think it's why anybody's there. I've never been online like playing Monster Hunter with somebody else and they've been like, so what'd you think about XYZ story point? Never. It's, what do you think about the Odangaron? Also, I say all of the monster names wrong. Don't come at me. Uh, the Odogaron? I call it the Odangaron because so every time you see it, you say, oh, dang! <laughs> and then he bites you. <laughs> 
I mean, that's my so, reaction. What's what's your name for like? How do you say Rathalos then? Oh, I do say Rathalos. Uh, oh, not man. all of them are not all of them are that hard, but it's the Odogaron or something. I say Odangaron. Um, there's like a big fish monster. It's just uh, the 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 Gir the Girotodus. There we go. I say Girotodus. I'm not sure if that's correct. It probably is. It can't be that wrong, right? Um, sure. The, the big berry boy. There's like a a, a, a a thing with horns. They all have horns. That's not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> a thing that lives in the sand and has horns. The point yeah. is, the point of the game has nothing to do with the story. In fact, if they could give you the option to just not do the story, that'd be super. Mm -hmm. And just let you go into it and play the game for what it is, which is a really fun system of killing monsters to get stuff, to make stuff, to kill monsters, to get stuff, to make stuff, to kill a monster, to get stuff, to make stuff, to kill a monster. It is this increasing progression system of you start out with what you later realize are scrub lord monsters, but you're like, oh my God, these are the scariest things I've ever fought in my life. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the next monster and you're like, oh my God, this is the scariest thing I've ever fought in my life. It's just a really nice progression system of being able to, first of all, branch out. Um, monster Hunter as a game, you know, you have a, a non talk character you play whatever character you want to name yourself the character creation in monster hunter by the way is really good you mm -hmm. have tons of different options it's a really nice character creation system when i was playing skyrim recently and creating my character when i realized how few options there were in comparison to newer games i was like oh well yeah i know it's kind of boring <laughs> because we're so <laughs> we're so spoiled now we're so spoiled now with how other games have just taken character creation to the next level and monster hunter does that really well so your character creation engine is great you get a companion you get palicos and they're like easily the best part of the game you get Amazing. a cute little humanoid cat person that's just your friend and it helps you in battle and like does stuff for you and it's like ugh. This is the best. I am totally on board with this system. And then on top of the character creation, the ability to take your play style in different directions is really nice because there are, I believe, 14 different weapon classes that you can use in Monster Hunter. They range from more basic things like the sword and shield to some wild bananas, silly stuff like a thing called a gun lance. Nice. I don't know what that does. I've never tried. There's my personal favorite, the hunting horn, which is, hey, you want to play a giant set of bagpipes and sing your pretty little songs and then whap a creature on the head with it? Yeah, yeah. I do. That sounds excellent. <laughs> so there's stuff like the hunting horn that is just silly nonsense. There are, of course, ranged weapons like bows, bow guns, which are different than bows. There's mm. all sorts of different directions that you... There's like twin swords. There's I use those. Those are fun. God, the long sword players if you're fighting a monster with a longsword player and you're just kind of in their range you're never going to be able to hit the monster because the longsword player is hitting you and you'll just never be able to get anywhere <laughs> so keep your distance maybe go switch out your weapon to a bow gun and then come back and just stay out of the way of that longsword player so there's so many different ways that you can choose to play at will you can switch out your weapon at any time. Even once you've embarked on a particular mission to go fight a monster, if you get to that monster and you're like, oh crap, I forgot that my armor is super weak to fire and I'm fighting the Rathalos and it breathes fire. You might want to go change your armor and you can, you can just go back to camp. You can run away like a coward, go back to camp, get into a tent, change all of your armor, switch out your weapon for something else, and then go charging right back in without having to pause, without having to go to a save screen, which mm -hmm. I will say that the loading screens in Monster Hunter can be pretty lengthy, but you know, that it is what it it's is. rendering some pretty big worlds for you. And they're explore. not nearly as bad as anthems. So it can't be that bad. Uh, so the loading screens are a pain, but they're not that bad. And once you're actually in any given mission, you do have a lot of freedom to pick and choose what you're going to do within that world. Um, so the way that monster hunter plays is there, of course, monsters, but they are spread out on a map of about, I'm, I'm trying to think pre iceborne six, maybe five to six total areas. And as of Iceborne, it's like, oh, this is the ice place. This is the desert place. This is the jungle place. This is the rock place. It's made mm -hmm. out of rocks. Don't 
fight me on that. So there's just a couple of different areas that you could. Oh, the Coral Highlands, of course. Oh, there's yeah, one that yeah. looks like it's those. underwater, but it's not. It's excellent. So the environments in all of these different locations that you can go to are really well done. They can be really confusing, specifically the forest one. I'm sure I I can't for the life of me remember its name right now. It's the jungle one. I don't need to be specific Mm -hmm. about it. But that map sucks sometimes because it's very easy to get lost and confused. But most of the other ones are really good. So the maps are really good. They're really interesting, really intricate and well done. And there's, of course, the monsters and then all this other stuff that you can find just for fun. And as someone that is very prone to picking up every single rupee, any space where I can just pick stuff up at will... Yes. So it's like, I'm going to pick up this mushroom and this bug and and maybe this fish. I can go fishing in this game. And then once you get back to the uh, the hub, God, what's it called? Astera. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So it's either Astera or new place. I can't remember the name of right now. Don't worry about it. It's in Iceborne. It starts with an S. Don't worry about it. I'll think about it later. Uh, Celiana, yes. For so, so it's Celiana nice and Iceborne, but I could only think of Somalia, and I was like, I know that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> I cannot say Somalia. <laughs> it's Celiana. So once you go back to your hub worlds, basically, where there are mo- no monsters, there's just NPCs, and you can do stuff to upgrade your weapons, etc. You can, of course, use all the stuff that you've collected, all the pelts that you got from monsters, all the claws, all the fangs, and combine those with things like mushrooms and bugs to make potions and things. So there's just so much that you can be doing at any given time that isn't just fighting monsters. And I think Monster Hunter World does that really, really well. I've spent easily minimum over 250 hours in Monster Hunter World. Oh, I, I would bet it's actually higher than that uh, because a big part of what makes the game fun is playing it online with your friends. Monster Hunter is really a game that is best played with other people, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can hunt any given monster or go on any give, given mission with usually up to four other people. But if it's just you and a buddy, sweet, the more the merrier. You and three people, awesome, go for it. So it's really fun to play online. Some of the caveats to the online play and just how it functions are really annoying, but that's beside the point. In general, I think it works really well. Uh, you do have to make sure that you are keeping up with the Joneses per se, because if you're like Jarrett and you fall way, way behind, <laughs> you're never going to dig your way back out of that. Yeah. So yeah, there there is a little bit of a difficulty with seasoned players queuing up with you know newer players, but you know that's just that's just part of how the game works. So overall, Monster Hunter World, a super fun game. And once the newer Monster Hunters come out, I will almost certainly be picking them up because now I'm I'm hooked. I'm a fan. Monster nice. Hunter is cool. It's for cool kids. Dragons That's are right. sweet. <laughs> 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 That's my official get... review. Monster Hunter World. Dragons are sweet. <laughs> there you go. Any game with dragons are sweet. Uh, so we're going to love Skyrim then. Yeah. Here, I hear I there's so. dragons in that, in that I hear game. there's dragons. <laughs> Here there's the little thing called dragons in that game. Oh, boy. Well, my number one. Favorite game of the pe- of the last generation. I wonder if you could guess. So I was. I'm torn between two because okay. I feel like it might actually be God of War four, but I feel okay. like it's probably not. Is it The Last of Us two? It's The Last of Us part two. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you were going to surprise I'm, me, but whatever. No, I'm sorry because classics and masterpieces deserve to be <laughs> at the top of lists. Understandable. And that is not saying God of War. That, and that's why I put God of War in the other one where, where it was right. best action adventure that we were talking about because it is a very, very, very good game. Same as like Horizon Zero Dawn, stuff like that. Both very, very good games. Um, but I kind of talked a lot about Last of Us Part Two on our la- on last week's episode during our live episode when we were talking about the five games we'd recommend to a new player. But again, Last of Us, like I played The Last of Us and I was like, holy shit, this game, incredible. And it sat at the at the top of my like favorite game of all time. I've talked For about how very, like very, very, long very, very time. long time until it was unseated by Last of Us Part Two because Last of Us Part Two just came in and in my head, it's, it's very hard, you know, obviously like the discussion of what is the best video game is like a very hard discussion to have because there are so many different factors. But for me, and, I, and when I kind of like really talk about games that I think are, are my favorites and stuff like that, I do really, 
it, it is a whole lot about how they make me feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so Last of Us, though, it made me feel a lot of things. It made I mean, me feel there was like joy, a lot of terror, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of sadness. But I think The Last of Us crafts such an incredible story. And I'm even talking about like, you know, one and two stick them together. Incredible story. But two especially did a lot of things. And I, and I know that it's a, it's been a hotly contested topic in the past when we talk about a, a cinematic video game being like, that's not what I'm here to play a video game for. I don't want to watch a movie. I want to play a game kind of thing. And I'm not saying last was necessarily fits that category, but I, it does in the same way that its story is well worth and above and beyond what a lot of movies can even bring to bring to the table. And yeah. especially because it does give you such a, a personal viewpoint of the two characters, Ellie and Abby, and that it does and how it crafts and weaves their story together so incredibly well. And how, you know, we talk about it in our review episode so much. So I, again, because the game is fairly new in that it came out this year, I don't want to go too heavy into like story spoilers and things like that, but that it takes the tragedy of it. It takes these character building and it shows these two people that you're supposed to love slash hate. And then how by the end of the game that can change and how you view, how you view these characters, it ties back into the original game in ways and like with reveals and things like that, that I felt were not the like easy option for how to tie it back in. Like I felt, I felt like in how like some past motivations is not like, Oh, that's who that is. Like my guess is of, Oh, that's what this person is doing and their motivations for doing it. Not the case. And it was from like a, a, a side thing that I was like, Oh, how did I not see it? But now that I see it, that, that those motivations provide so much force and make complete sense about why this character is doing what they're doing. And so, but I just really see it as like the end all, like to my, in my head, I, it was kind of the same way with like when the last, when I beat the last of us, I was just like, I don't know how they could do that better. I don't know how someone could make something better. And then they just did again with the last of part. And two, then they just, just casually did it. And then they just did it again. Casual. Just like, Oh, here you go. The best game, <laughs> second, you know, best game ever. And so it just like the gameplay is all there for me. It's incredibly difficult fighting through all the zombies, learning how to let both, especially this time. Cause I did play it on hard which I normally play like last of us part one, I played on easy. And so like even, or not easy, no, the normal, like normal mode. And so just even having that, like how much you do have to be so mindful and, and think through what you have, how you have to, you know, like what items you have, what you can craft and how that then plays into how you handle every encounter that you come across is really impressive. The, the quality of the AI in both the zombie or the click like clicker, the infected and the human AI that you have, like they're smart. They're not just like standing around just waiting for you to shoot them. It's not like a shooting gallery. It's like you have to fight and you have to fight hard. You and have to think they're, about it. You have to plan you have to your think attacks. about it. Exactly. You got to know, like you have to like try to do as best scouting of some areas as you can and then for, work your way. Be like, okay, I think this is going to be the best way to go about it. And you know, and you may like certain areas I tried and failed so many times, but it's just this blend of like, you feel the pressure, you feel the terror, you feel the, all the feelings that the characters that you're, that you're playing as that you're supposed to feel. And I just like, it just, it, even though the game was depressing as hell, yeah, not like, a it's happy a game, not a happy game. Not it's a, a very one. heavy game. I like, I've only replayed the last of us one time. And I replayed it right before Last of Us Part 2 came out. And Last of Us Part 2, I'll play again, sure. But it's going to be a while because I need to be able to sit in it. And I need to be able to like still unpack everything that I went through in this game. And, you know, again, on the same on the same note as one of the big selling points of Warrior in the Blind Forest, the soundtrack to the game is incredible as well. Like, uh, And I actually listened to a really great podcast. It was called uh, Game Maker's Notebook or Handbook. But it was Austin Wintry interviewed Gustavo Santillaya. Oh gosh, what a what a star-studded roster right there! It was like Dang. an hour and a half long ep podcast episode, but they just talked about like how he how Gustavo finds like the inspiration for these things, and just listening to him and how his process for creating music is insane. He did the music. They say they talked about it in this episode. He did the music for and his and what like he did the movie Babel, 
I don't know if, you, if you've oh, ever seen that one. Yeah. How, like Brad Pitt. It's one of those like multi storyline things where yeah, like how all these people. I but I know what it's about. He won an Academy Award for that for that soundtrack, <laughs> uh, for that score. And so, yeah, I think he's won two, I believe. But he talked about specifically, he also did the music for Brokeback Mountain. Huh. He wrote the whole soundtrack before the movie had been shot. He had one. He had one meeting with the director where they talked about it, and then he just went out, made the soundtrack, and then they cut the movie to to fit. I guess they just told told him like, "There's mountains." He was like, "Okay." But they talked. But he it. talked about how that was very similar in like how he takes this. He thinks he you know, he comes up with the original like kind of themes and motives motifs and everything, but then after that, it really is. It just sounds like he gets in his studio and just like lets whatever comes out comes out. And I just think for like the, the like hauntingness of it all is incredibly like he taps into some stuff there. He taps into feeling and emotion. And I think that comes across so plainly. And this one too, even he has the added benefit of he's working with this one. He collaborated with Matt Quayle who did the music for Mr. Robot, which that is also very like, he knows how to really build like the tension with very like deep undertones and like, like heart, like, percussion more symphony synthy synthy styles of music and electronic stuff but he just adds that to gustavo's more acoustic sound and by god did it make some impressive music this time around so that's uh, you know hitting on all the right scores and again just the character design character development story writing acting graphical quality of it an insanely great game and i just think all of those things come together to build an incredibly hard-hitting emotional well-crafted story that I think you would be hard pressed to find equals in, in other forms of media as well. And that's why just for me, last of us part two, who knows how long it'll sit at my number one, but it's, I think it's going to stay there for a really, really, really long time. And because of that, I had to give it my number one spot for my favorite of the generation. Well, in comparison, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, top of that, top of that. Come on. In now. comparison, Come my number one is going to sound frivolous, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm fine with because I kind of picked it for not not frivolous reasons, but again, largely because of the the role that it played in my life for such a long time. Okay. Pause. I have to go stir my soup real quick. Okay. <laughs> I'll be right back. cooking down to a beautiful looking soup okay what kind of, what kind of soup is it it is it was just everything that i had leftovers of, <laughs> of so it's onion three different bell peppers a bunch of kale celery white beans jalapenos and i oh, just damn. like crammed it all in there and i was like it's food so we'll see how it turns out <clears throat> You ever do that thing too, where you like swallow or yawn too hard and it feels like you pulled your tongue or something like that? No. What? Oh, I just did that and it hurts so bad. It's never happened to me. <laughs> but I yawn hard. Fair, I have a, uh, I have a clinically small bite radius. Hmm. Every dentist and orthodontist I've ever had has complained about it a lot. And I'm like, I can't fix my bones, bro. Yeah, be like, Come on, I don't man. know this what is, you want me to is, do about this. If anything, I'm coming to you to fix this. Yeah, this is your job. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This sounds uh, like a you problem. <laughs> anyways, so, okay. Bro, I'll roll it ahead in my life. So, the game that I'm going to talk about is... We haven't talked about it in so long. Yeah, I'm trying I to think and I can't... I haven't played it in a while, but it's like... I got to give credit where it's due. It's Overwatch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah. Oh, so man. for context, you know, it's been maybe a year since I've really played Overwatch consistently. Mm -hmm. That being said, I got Overwatch, I think at launch because you I told think we me did. to. Yeah, cuz we were like, yeah, oh. I was, yeah, I said The thing is I wasn't game. I wasn't even jazzed <laughs> about it. We were like, oh, I think I'm Zach and I had to like 
convince you to get it. You, like you I want to say that you had yeah. to make me get it because I wasn't going to get it because I was like I don't I don't want to play it. <laughs> <I don't laughs> that's exactly how, that's exactly how you told us you were going to do it. <laughs> I'm sure, that's probably exactly how that conversation went. But I finally broke down and I was like, it's for the show. I'll get it for the show. So I got it and I think I played that game minimum once a week much more than that the first few years Mm -hmm. i played that game consistently for a solid two to three years which that's a hell of a lot of time i can't even i don't even know how many hours i've put into overwatch it is probably my most played game I would assume by a pretty significant margin Uh, just because especially that first year and then also the second year Mm -hmm. and then also kind of the third year, it was just super solid, consistent play. And a big part of the reason for that is that um, so quick overview of Overwatch. If you're not familiar, uh, Overwatch is a team based first person shoot first person yeah, that's correct. First yeah, it person. is. Yeah. I just usually don't say the T noise. I say first person and not first oh, yeah. person. So I kind of freaked myself out. Anyways, it is a team-based first-person shooter game. So it has a, um, unlike your Call of Duties, uh, which have like, it, the, the emphasis is more on individual weapons mm-hmm. as opposed to character uh, overwatch is a team-based character driven game so each team in your standard quick play mode is made up of six people on each team and those six people come from a given roster of different heroes is what the game calls them Uh, each of the heroes does something different so you've got classes there's like these are your damage players your dps these ones are your they Health changed the system healing? recently, so I don't yeah. really... Oh, tanks, of course! They they, tanks, cons- yeah, yeah, they yeah. consolidated them. I forgot about that. Originally, there were DPS, defenders, tanks, and supports. But then I think maybe, I would say I think, at least a I couple of like, years ago, they consolidated it to tanks. DPS is now a huge category, mm-hmm. and supports. Because so I feel like they rolled different. a lot of the... I feel like they rolled a lot of the defense characters and like they split did. them between tank and DPS, but yeah, a lot of them did. went into just DPS, I think. So uh, essentially it's, it's just a mix of, you know, your ideal, and this is big air quotes and definitely depended upon how the game is playing at the time. But in a lot of ideal scenarios, you have two tanks on a team, two DPS, and then two healers. Uh, and that's kind of the, the best outcome. Sometimes it's tweaked one way or another, but that's kind of what everyone can mostly agree on. It's, uh, mostly good to have yeah. two tanks, two, two DPS, and two supports. And of those character classes, there's a ton of variety. So let's take my favorite category. Uh, it's a tie between tank and support for me, but let's take the support category. So of the supports, there are, gosh, at least like seven or eight now. There's a lot of supports these days. You can mm-hmm. play a character like Mercy, who is great because you don't have to aim so even though it's a first person shooter not every character relies on aim and sometimes you can still do okay without having to actually line up a headshot which is great for people like me so for a character like mercy she heals people by just kind of like beaming the healing directly at them just injecting it straight into their veins just injecting it straight into their soul and then she can fly which is great to an extent and then she also has a little pistol just in case she gets into trouble pew 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 but the main thing is healing and just staying alive and then you have other healers like zenyatta who he can't move so good it's pretty slow. Yeah, a little bit. It <laughs> doesn't have a lot of ability to escape a bad situation, but he arguably does way more damage because he's got damage orbs and healing orbs, so he can make it easier to kill the enemy team. At the same time, he can heal one of the people on his own team. And then he's got a sweet kick. He can just kick yeah. people right in the face. So Zenyatta's a really interesting character and a hard time, but if you want to get those sweet headshots, if you want to hear that dink, as you slowly kill people with Zenyatta, uh, it's it's a great way to be able to play a support character that still has a bit more of that DPS flair to it. Mm-hmm. Similar things go for Moira. It's really easy to kill people with Moira. It's the best. Yeah, it is. I know Genji's hater, but it's awesome. I, <laughs> so I hate her very much because I play as Genji, and that's <laughs> ma- ma- most of the time. Yeah, and yeah she's a it's usually pain a Moira ass killing you. <laughs> Yeah. And then there's also long range characters like uh, like Anna, who is technically a sniper, but she's a healer. So you're mm-hmm. literally sniping into your own teammates to heal them. It's great. So there's a ton of variety even within these individual classes. 
And then just in terms of, it's just fun. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. It's just a fun game. I don't know what more to say about it other than that it looks great uh, in comparison to most other, not most, but a lot, a lot of other first-person shooters. Overwatch has a very vibrant color scheme. It has mm -hmm. a very vibrant color scheme. All of the characters are really interestingly designed. Um, you've got a lot of variety with what the different characters look like and what their personalities are like. Each of these characters is obviously, you know, it's their own person, so they all have very unique personalities. They have different interactions with each other there actually is some story going on in the background even mm -hmm. though it's not a story-based game so you can still get a lot out of having like an emotional connection to a character like anna who's an old old lady and i also want to be an old old lady someday <laughs> <And then> the, <laughs> that's the goal is to be an Goals. old old awesome lady and then there's also characters like Widowmaker, who has like a tragic backstory. And she's like the product of some experiments. And it's like, yeah, sure, go, go off, Overwatch, do whatever you want. So there's a lot of different things to love about the game. And aside from some, you know, questionable balance issues um overwatch in the later years did definitely run into some pretty severe balance issues but uh, i think in the past few months actually they kind of not wiped the slate clean but the overwatch team did a lot to try and basically undo the power creep that was happening of mm -hmm. just making every character just infinitely do more damage it's like i don't think that's what we should be doing and that's what they decided so they did a bunch of rebalancing issues and i think it's in a better place now but the point is it's fun it's just a oh, fun yeah. game it looks cool it plays great you know it's not like it's stuttery or laggy it's a really well designed game and i have put like at least a kindergartner's amount of years into a preschool, a preschooler's yeah. amount of years into Overwatch. So if Overwatch were a kid, I'd have a two-year-old by now. So yeah, <laughs> Overwatch is my number one. And I honestly think that it, it deserves that spot uh, just out of how much enjoyment I've gotten out of it over the years. Uh, every now and then I'll still play it sporadically, but we I'm actually jumped into excited. it for a little bit during our extra yeah. life. Yeah, we did. And I was like, man, this is a good game. I know. I, I played it again. I played it game. again like the next day. I was like, oh, man. No, Overwatch. This feels good. Yeah, this feels right. Because <laughs> like so, it was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm really excited for Overwatch 2. So mm -hmm. I don't think we have a hard release date for that yet. But there is an Overwatch 2 coming at some point, And I'm excited about it. It's going to be Same. great. Same. Yeah, I didn't put as many hours into it as you have. And I think I with those types of games, it's harder for me to like just like even Apex. Like I played Apex Legends since launch, but I'm only like a, a level 130 or something like that. And even in and Overwatch, like I am like maybe the third bronze star rank. So like I haven't mm -hmm. played like I'm, I'm not like so like I definitely haven't put in like near as many hours into it with these games. But still, it is one that same with you. The first couple of years it was out, I was all I was playing. Oh yeah. And it was my number one game. By We were playing a lot mile. together and all this other stuff, but it's just like, you know, other stuff comes up and I get, I do get sucked into like the call of duties and the, and the apexes and things like that. It's hard to stick with the one solely like that. Yeah. But man, for those first few years, I'm right there with you. It was all I touched and it was all I played and it was just all I could want to want to play yeah. the game. At and that I mean, moment. overwatch is one of the, only games that I voluntarily play competitively because there's mm -hmm. of course like the casual mode which is quick play and then there are some other modes that are like more fun modes like mystery heroes and capture mm -hmm. the flag and then there's the the actual competitive mode I will play competitive on my own like I'll go in there and I'll get on mic and I'll actually talk to the team and tr sometimes it depends um but I'll actually like try to be a team player and be like Genji Genji he's here somebody turn around please <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of the very few games that I get just as much enjoyment out of playing alone as opposed to with a team. Like if I yep. have friends online, that's awesome. If I don't, I will still have fun. And that's, I think, a good contrast to like Monster Hunter World, which I very rarely play alone. Like mm -hmm. that's a game that I play with friends almost exclusively. Overwatch, I'd say it's 50-50. I yeah. probably put in as much time on my own as I did with my friends. So yeah, it's it's a good experience whether you're solo or with other people. And I think that's the mark of a good a good game. Absolutely.
Overwatch is one that I'm. I mean, once Overwatch Two comes out, yeah, we'll all switch to that. Oh, we're I'll yeah, be, we're all getting. Oh, back we'll be playing. It. We'll be playing. Yeah, we're we're gonna get into it hardcore when when uh, Overwatch Two comes out. But yeah, then we'll be playing that one. I'm sure for years and years to come. So yeah, like we will all these so. games that were that we talked about today because you know the new generation is here. There's gonna be fantastic games coming out for that as well that I can't wait to get my hands on. But for now, these are the games that left us with the biggest memories and the, you know, and the best impressions of what gaming is in the last generation. So that's why I think all of these games hit in our top three of the favorite games from the last generation. So as always, like we'd love to hear what your games are as well, which games really topped out as the number ones for you as well we want to hear from you so let us know at write us an email at teamchatpodcast at gmail.com comment on our social media write us a post there join our discord and talk about it with us there as well we'd love to hear from you but we say now adieu to the old generation and now we are ushering in the new that's right a salute Thank press, you for all the fantastic F. games. Press <laughs> in the F chat. to pay respects. <laughs> That's right. And so we hope that everyone enjoys uh, wherever you're at in, in gaming. If you're still sticking with the old generation, jumping into the new, we hope that you all continue to have great mi- gaming memories to be made by all of these fun games. But with that, though, that brings this episode of Team Chat Podcast to a close. I'm one of your hosts, Jarrett Wilson, joined across the power of the internet by my co-host, Rachel Mogan. Adios. We'll see you all next week. And until then, we'll see you next time.